Hello and welcome to our show, Budget with Business Standard. We have with us today, Professor K. Srinath Reddy. He is the president of the Public Health Foundation of India and one of the foremost health experts of our country and an authoritative voice on the subject. Welcome to the show, sir. Uh, Pleasure. Sir, so first of all, uh, this is going to be the second pandemic budget uh, back to back. Now, in this uh, situation, what do you think uh, the government is expected to do for the healthcare sector? I believe we have had adequate warnings about how our health sector has been, in a sense, challenged in very many ways during the different waves of the COVID pandemic. We have also seen that there is now a greater degree of political commitment to strengthening the health sector after many years of neglect. And this is true of both the central and state governments. They have recognized that unless we actually invest in strengthening the health sector, we are likely to see serious consequences for our economic growth, as well as for very many other areas of our social and developmental activities. And we do recognize that this particular commitment has been reflected in the annual budget presented by the union government in 2021, February, and also to some extent in what the state governments are doing. But a lot more needs to be done if we need to continue to strengthen the health sector to meet the challenges that it faces, not only during public health emergencies, but even during the other periods when there are very many other health needs that require to be met. Sir, uh, in the last budget, we've seen uh, uh, Finance Ministry allocate a large amount of sum towards vaccination. Do you think we need that much allocation towards vaccination this year as well? I believe so, for the simple reason that we recognize that many of the vaccines that we have available mm -hmm. are not necessarily going to provide immunity over a very long period of time. Yeah. Of course, the fact that many people have been infected with the virus and have acquired some infection-related immunity is a positive sign. But even that, at least in some groups of people, tends to fade after some months, particularly in the elderly and those who are immunocompromised, the initial immune response itself may be rather weak and tends to fade faster. But recognizing, firstly, that we are being challenged by new variants which have the property of immune escape or immune evasion, at least partially, they are not able to prevent mild illness, the vaccines, uh, though they are able to prevent serious illness and hospitalization and death, yes. nevertheless, I believe the people who are more likely to be susceptible uh, to serious infection, like, as I said, the elderly and the immunocompromised, need better protection. Then we are also likely to see newer generations of vaccine coming up, like, for example, some of the mucosal vaccines, which can be nasally administered and may be easier to administer for children. So I believe we have to invest a fair amount in the vaccination program, at least for this year, though it may not necessarily entail universal uh, vaccination uh, for all adults. I believe boosters may not be required for many people, but at least for some sections of the people who are at risk, either because of likelihood of more severe disease if exposed, or more likelihood of frequent exposure to high viral loads like the healthcare workers, and other frontline essential workers, yeah. they do need to be protected. Yeah. And of course, if we roll out the ch children vaccine, then that yeah. itself will also be a big number. Yes. That love. Yes, it would. It would. It would. So what, according to you, are the biggest shortcomings in the health sector now? Is it the lack of financial resources? Is it infrastructure or bureaucracy or something else? What do you think? Well, as far as the budget is concerned, I'm not sure it can correct the bureaucracy part of it. No, of course. Though yeah. certain administrative reforms are going to be required for there, there as well, in terms of the nature of governance and accountability and people participation. So that's going to be important, even from the point of view of improving the delivery as well as bringing in better accountability. 
However, I believe we have shortcomings across all other areas as well. We have shortcomings in infrastructure. For example, we do not have very clear cut network of urban primary health care centers functioning in many states. Uh, even the rural primary health care centers, despite strong investments in improvement over the last 10 years, have uh, still uh, have a fair amount of work to be done in order to improve their infrastructure at various levels from the sub-centers uh, to the community health centers. But it is the district hospitals that require the greatest attention because we have seen that secondary care, which is vital in terms of COVID, uh, for example, whether it's uh, oxygen uh, equipped beds, yeah. for taking care of most of the patients who require hospitalization, not so much the ventilator provided intensive care beds, but the oxygen equipped beds. Now, if we are unable to really provide those kind of beds in district hospitals, or if we have to vacate most of our hospitals to accommodate COVID patients, and neglect non-COVID conditions, care for many other non-COVID conditions, that means our district hospitals are not really measuring up to the job. So we need to strengthen the district hospitals. There's one other reason why district hospitals need to be strengthened. They ought to become, once they're upgraded, major training centers for health workforce. New medical colleges can be attached to them. New nursing colleges can be attached to them. Most importantly, allied health professionals of various categories can be trained there. Frontline health workers need to be trained there. Right now, we do need to invest in infrastructure. We do need to invest in digital technologies. But all that investment would be like a carriage without wheels if you do not have adequate health workforce. So our biggest priority should be while improving infrastructure, while investing in all kinds of health technologies, especially digital technologies, we have to have a multi-layered, multi-skilled health workforce created as a high priority. And since creating a large number of doctors is going to take time, which we must, of course, invest strongly in frontline health workers who are technology enabled, both for urban and rural primary health care. That is where your best defense against Public health emergencies lies, and that's where your best delivery vehicle for even other essential primary services will be. Do you think pandemic has sort of taken away the focus from a lot of these primary health care centers and uh, all the other infrastructure related issues that you talked about? Some part of our uh, health sector has sort of been neglected. Well, that neglect has been long standing. Uh, though the National Rural Health Mission did attend to rural health services, but again, it had a very limited spectrum. It only looked at maternal and child health services, some infectious diseases, some nutritional deficiency issues. The, it never looked at almost 85% of the healthcare needs of the people, whether it's eye problems or ear problems or blood pressure or diabetes, the, the non-communicable diseases, mental health area, all of that was ignored in that remit. Now, the national health policy of 2017 said, yes, we are going in for comprehensive primary health care, bringing in everything into the ambit and getting health and wellness centers created. Excellent. But that needs to be proceed fast into implementation. Similarly, they said basic diagnostic services and essential drugs will be provided at the health and wellness centers. Now, that is a very important element because a major portion of out-of-pocket expenditure is outpatient care. And a major portion of that is expenditure on essential medicines and essential diagnostics. Mm -hmm. So if you tackle that without much of an expenditure, you can greatly reduce out-of-pocket expenditure of people. So these are the kind of investments that we need to make in primary health care. Dr. Reddy, one last thing that I wanted to talk to you about is that health is on the concurrent list. To, uh, to that extent, uh, do you think that center needs to take a bigger role uh, when it comes to the decisions in the health sector, take a bigger lead? Uh, and uh, is it something that limits us uh, in uh, really pushing the healthcare sector uh, infrastructure reforms? Well, I think the center should sort of in consultation with the states, set the overall policy. The planning 
should be done at the state capital level. But implementation with a fair amount of flexibility based upon realistic analysis of evolving needs of that particular district should be done at the district level. If you are adequately digitally enabled in terms of good health management information systems, which are giving you fairly real-time, accurate, representative data, rather than you know doing surveys once in three years or four years, then it is the district that will be able to gauge both the immediate evolving requirements as well as the resources that are available which need to be mobilized and showed up. How do you bring in, for example, apart from the public sector, if you need the private sector, how do you bring them in? What are the resources available? How do you do the networking? You can't decide that sitting in Delhi. Ultimately, what you require is digitally enabled, decentralized decision-making at the district level with people participation for accountability. So you need people partnered public health as well. Therefore, I believe you cannot over-centralize everything. In fact, you have seen even in COVID, some of the states which have taken a fair amount of initiative have done well. Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Odisha, they've all done well. Some of the states have not taken a similar level of initiative or they're having the backlog of poorly functioning health systems where investments have been inadequate in the past. Efficiency levels have been low in the past. So they cannot suddenly ramp up. So you have to definitely have the state level leadership available and accountable, but preferably at the district level. It is the district which is the real area of operations. So center should set the policy, state should do the planning, district should do the implementation and monitoring. Absolutely. Very well put, Dr. Reddy. Thank you so much for sharing your insights uh, on the health sector and what we can expect and giving us a direction on what the budget should probably do for the healthcare sector this year. Thank you so much for taking the time and joining us. Most welcome. Thank you. Thank you. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.